Well, hello, shiny, crafty people, and welcome back to the channel. Tim Totten here, and today I want to show you another placemat hack. And I have to tell you, this is actually one of the more fun ones because uh, it uses something we do with every day, which is technology. This one is a carrier for a laptop. So, you know, if you or your kids or your grandkids happen to uh, carry around a laptop and it looks the same as everybody else's or their black bag looks the same as everybody else's, you can make them this cute little sleeve. It's like a clutch for your Chromebook or your smaller laptop. It's so good because then everyone knows which one's theirs, but also it's going to give a little layer, extra layer of protection for your device. Uh, and so you can slip this into a backpack or a piece of luggage or something and have this cute piece. And if you decided to add some little pockets and other stuff to this for, you know, other details like a notebook or pens or whatever else, you have a really amazing sort of personalized studio right here in your hand. So come over with me to the cutting table or I say down to the cutting table because it's just below us and see all the stuff we need to get started. For the style laptop case I'm making in this particular video, we're gonna need uh, a standard placemat. This one's 14 by 19. I'm gonna need a couple pieces of Velcro, the um, soft side and the crunchy side or the hook and the loop as they call it. I'm gonna use some um, matching thread. I'm gonna use white thread actually for this because that's what mostly is stitched already on it. A seam ripper, because goodness knows we're probably gonna need it. A pair of scissors just in case, mostly to trim threads and things. Some pins just to pin things together or I could use clips, right? And then of course the laptop that we wanna use size-wise. This is a Chromebook, it's a smaller laptop and this is what really works with that type of, of placemat just because some of the bigger laptops don't, won't necessarily work. So what I'm gonna plan to do is the style I want to make here, uh, I'm going to take all this stuff off first because I don't need any of that. And, you know, normally you don't rip tags off of, like, off of, like, uh, mattresses. But, you know, I bought this so I can rip all the stuff off of it. And I'll pull off all the little plastic connector pieces, right? So what I want to do with this one is I want to make a a laptop cover that has a little envelope closure like that because I like this detail so I'm I'm not even going to turn this in. I'm just going to stitch up these sides and leave this open so I just figure out where I want it how far I want it to go over and I'll keep pulling up until I'm happy with that I kind of like that look and I won't stitch this part here so I'll stitch these two closed now I'm going to then add the velcro so I'll add piece of Velcro here, somewhere along this area, and the other piece of Velcro underneath this, right? So they'll fit together. So I just have to find out where those need to go. All right, that one needs to go in that area. And you can measure this or pin it however you want to do. I just kind of measured it by sight. Now, if I was going to get real specific, I would get purple thread out. And I'm just going to use white thread because I think it looks good as long as I sew it cleanly. I think it'll look good. So that piece is there. Now the difference is, if I put this on here, it'll, have, it'll stitch through all of this. So instead of what I do is I'm gonna come through and pick out with my, with my um, seam ripper, the stitches along the edge here, just enough, long enough so I can pull it back and put that, that Velcro inside here without the stitches coming through the top. So I'll just come back along here, put my, now, now, the one that you use, if you use a different design, like, you know, one of these, you won't need to do that, obviously. But for the one I'm doing here, I'm going to need to. And it's not a big deal to come through. I mean, like, you can adjust. It's not going to take me very long to do that. Um, so let me just keep working on that. And I'm just going to do it sort of carefully. Just take my time. You know, I, I went to the store... Um, to buy different types of placemats, and um, several. This one actually is also a um, is also a Pioneer Woman. I seem to do a lot of those. Uh, Walmart has a decent selection, but they change. So this one might not be available any longer. This was the um, a Pioneer Woman placemat, Celia Lace. It says here, Celia Lace. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if it's available still. I also, when I'm looking for placemats to do these kind of projects, I tend to look on uh, some online retailers like Amazon or you can go to like, 
you know, um, with some of the other ones. Some of the stores like TJ Maxx and that sort of thing. So I'm going to probably pull that stitch from the back because it's going to be a little easier than trying to not tear that lace apart. So I'm going to finish taking this out and then we'll go to the next step. So now that I've actually pulled the stitching out here, it's, it's opened the entire end up. So I could, if I chose, because I need to put the, the, the uh, Velcro on this side, I'm going to come through, let me pull that through, and just put it into this layer so that it doesn't come through the top, and then I'll sew one stitch back along there. So I'm going to flip this over, and now I need to put that, uh, that Velcro right along the edge there, and I will make sure that I've centered it. And you can measure that if you feel uncomfortable. If you're not comfortable doing it, I've been eyeing this stuff for so long, and I know this is not meant to be an exact science, so I'm not going to be too worried about it. Put that along there, so I know I'm going to stitch that. And it's just going to go through this bottom layer. Now, on any other uh, one, like these, you're not going to be able to do that as well, because this is already a quilted thing, and this was multiple pieced. So it's going to be different depending upon which of the different types of placemats that you use. So I'm going to come along and stitch that, and then I'm going to stitch this entire thing back down. And I might as well go ahead and figure out where the sizing of this is going to be. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure I put my, my oh, piece back in and measure how big we were doing that. Probably right in that area. Bring that down. Yeah, that was good. Maybe I did a little bit more. See, before when I did this, I should have gone ahead and measured it. Yeah, that was about it. So what I'll do is I'll come in and just um, put a couple pins or clips. In fact, I'll just take this by hand. I'll hold it together here, take the thing out, and then I can come back and put some clips or some pins. And... Uh, And actually what I need to do is just mark it because I'm gonna to have to sew this one still, I forgot. So let me actually put a pin in that to show me where to fold it. Not all the way through, just the one layer, the bottom layer. Same thing down on this end. I'll put a pin just to that bottom layer. And now I know how far to fold my piece up later. All right, let's go over the sewing machine and, add, and stitch these two together. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stitch on this Velcro and I will Begin just at one corner. I'm using white thread and I'm using a relatively long stitch length, like a three. You could use a two or a three, it really wouldn't matter. Should take my pin out there. And then I'm just gonna hit the corner here and turn it and I'm just sewing on a square here. And again, even though I didn't use a matching thread, I think that because it's real, um, I'm using a nice, simple rectangle, it should work out fine. Now the other one's gonna be a little more difficult. That's the one that I'm sewing in here. So what I have to do is make sure I pull the fabrics out of the way and only sew through the one layer. So I'll pull those other layers out of the way and only sew through a single layer. Pull my pin out. I don't do that often enough. You really don't want to sew over the pins. And I just reach underneath and make sure that I'm not in two layers. So I'm not sewing through this layer. See, I've pulled all that out of the way. Make sure I'm not sewing through it. Turn it this way. We'll make sure again that I'm only sewing through one layer, not through those other layers. All right. And the nice part is the back of this won't get seen because it's going to get closed up in. The last thing we're going to do is flip those layers back together. So we get those layers put back together. And I'm just going to put that stitch right back along the outer edge that was already there. And I'll pull off any of these threads that are after when we pulled it out. So 
So it'll look like it was always stitched together the same way like it always was before. If you had another placemat next to it, you wouldn't even know that I had made any changes to the placemat. You would have to wonder, how did he get that, that down in there? All right, so I'm gonna trim these threads. And then we're gonna come back and go ahead and um, fold these to the points like we had done before. Remember I had unfolded it. I'm gonna fold that point back together and stitch along the edge there. I'm gonna do the same thing at this end over here. So I'll start with this one. So I folded it up to match that point. I'll pull the pin out and I'm really gonna backstitch here on this one because this is gonna get a lot of wear and tear. And the way I'm gonna do these is I'm, there's already a stitch there, but I'm gonna make sure they're lined up exactly next to each other. I'm gonna follow that little eighth inch stitch. I mean, it's really just barely inside. And then I'm gonna back up to the bottom too, just to really make sure it held. And so when we look on the other side, you'll see it went through the same place on the other side. And now it's completely enclosed and we'll do the same with the other side. Now this side, I can do it from the bottom. Make sure the top pin, that this lines up where it's supposed to cross and I can go from the bottom up. And again, at the end down here, I'm gonna make sure I backstitch it quite well. All right, and there is our finished piece. And again, this folds down to connect right here. Give that cute look, and I'm gonna show you what this looks like with my laptop in it. I place the laptop in here. And then that piece comes down and Velcro shut. And you have sort of a clutch for your laptop. You could of course add a strap or something on this, but I kind of think this is meant to be more like something that you would put into some luggage or a backpack. And if you wanted, you could bring that elastic, or I'm sorry, not elastic, the Velcro all the way to the edges. But I think this is just a cute look, real simple. Place. I mean, you could have added some pockets on the back if you wanted. You can really make this your own and and uh, really make it look even cuter, especially if you can get some stuff that sort of matches to it. But how nice is that? It's for a Chromebook. Like if you had a, now if you wanted to make one for like an iPad, you could easily make a design that would fit an iPad as well. Maybe make it a little smaller. Um, there's so many options for this. So that is your cute little laptop clutch. Thank you so much for, let me close it up right so it looks good. And of course you could use the other side of this too. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you joining us here on the channel. If you liked this video and wanna see more cute uh, placemat hacks or other fun things that you can make uh, really simple, uh, well then please like, subscribe and uh, join our channel. Also join our Facebook group. The link is down in the description below. And until next time folks, Stay crafty. Bye for now. All right, well, I gotta figure out who to give this to because the purple lace is just not really my style.